Hi, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about air boxes and air boxes are basically those structures you find above the driver's head and extending back to the rear wing. Uh, I've sketched a car here, that's a driver, that's the overall bar, that's the engine's cooler, that's the engine itself and that's the exhaust pipe and that's the, the, the rear wing. And this view is from above, driver's helmet, that's the air box from above and the uh, rear wing. So, first of all, what does an airbox do? Well, when a car is driving, a Formula 1 car drives, typically drives very fast. So, uh, air is going in this direction, hitting the car in this direction, and air is going in through this opening and through that airbox, and it hits those inlet trumpets of the engine. Um, one key benefit of the of the of the of the airbox is that the air coming in here is is a little bit more than the air being consumed by the engine so basically this imbalance of more coming in than being used up causes an increased pressure and this increased pressure provides the engine with a form of supercharging i.e. more power Estimates, uh, you know, some estimates say that the power increase is something in the range of, you know, 15 to 20 horsepower. So this first benefit of, of, a, of an airbox is called the ram effect because that air ramming in into that airbox provides some form of supercharging, which uh, gives the engine an increased power uh, output. The second benefit of an airbox is the following. Uh, I'm gonna change colors. Let me take, uh, yeah, let me take, uh, what do I take? I'll take purple. Uh, did I change, yeah. Now, when a car is, uh, when a racing car has the coolers, and the coolers, what they do, they cool the engine's fluids, and they exhaust a lot of hot air exhaust pipes as well a lot of hot air wings and the whole car in it, uh, as a whole inc do a lot of turbulences in the air so basically if i was like driving behind this car i'm getting a lot of hot air a lot of turbulent air but all this heat and turbulence is at a certain level something like that so you can see that the height of the air box avoids all that hot and turbulent air and basically with that air box I'm getting uh, non-turbulent and cooler air up there of course that air is still turbulent and still has some heat but way less than down here so uh, I'm just gonna change back to green so the second benefit of an air box is that that air up here is way better than let's say down here because especially if I'm behind a car, especially if I'm closely following a car, I'm getting all that hot and turbulent air. And the air box up there is getting clean. By clean, I mean non-turbulent and cool air, which translates to, again, or, or uh, sorry, let's say more power. More power for the en uh, from the engine because it's getting much better, much better uh, air, uh, much better air supply than uh, you know having having its intake down here at this height where all the hot air and the turbulences are coming in. So that's the second benefit of, of air boxes. A third benefit of air boxes is obviously added sponsorship space. I mean, look at this. This is a huge area and a very prominent area. So. You know, any, any sponsorship you put up here can be sold to a premium price because it's very visible, especially on TV. So sponsorship space is uh, one big advantage, a financial advantage of an airbox. And airboxes come at a cost, uh, and that's an aerodynamic cost, 
because having such a, uh, such a structure in front of the rear wing uh, provides or, or produces turbulences to that rear wing and would render that rear wing less effective had there not been a, you know, a, an airbox in front. However, I'm not so sure if that's really a cost because if you, that's why I included this, this drawing, uh, this top uh, view of the, of the drawing. If you design your airbox very cleverly, you could even improve the rear wing's performance because imagine if you had no airbox, there's the, the, the driver and the cockpit and you have a, through, because of the helmet and the cockpit and so on, you'd have a lot of turbulences over here which would be hitting the rear wing. With a cleverly, with a, with a sort of a teardrop shaped airbox, you could reduce this turbulence and provide, you know, a better uh, air or, or uh, you know, uh, less, uh, less turbulent air to the airbox than if you had no airbox. So I'm going to put here a, a rear wing performance and uh, I'd say plus minus. I mean, it could be an advantage. It, it, it could be a disadvantage having an airbox. I don't know. I don't have any measurements, but I reckon I reckon more it'll be more positive having an airbox because an airbox can really remove a lot of this turbulence uh, stemming from the cockpit and 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 uh, and and, and, and um, the driver's helmet and other factors by having a, a good external shape and really provide the wing with better a better air supply than uh, you know not having an airbox uh, over here. Now airboxes started appearing in the mid 70s. Uh, sorry, in, in the early 70s, basically, I think 70 or 71. And they went through the 70s, were getting bigger and bigger, and the worst or most obscene airboxes were seen in 1976. Basically, one car is very well known for its really huge airbox, and that's the Ligier. I forgot the type number, but it's a Ligier. Check it out, Ligier 1976. And I'm sure if you Google it, you'll see some pictures of how that airbox was. Uh, airboxes were banned in 1976 because they were deemed unsafe. Airboxes started reappearing in Formula One uh, from 1987 onwards because from 1987 onwards, uh, non-turbocharged cars or atmospheric engine cars were re-allowed or were allowed in Formula One and those uh, included airboxes because the airbox with its re ram effect gave those cars a uh, less of a disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis, uh, turbo cars. Turbocharged cars never use airboxes because, you know, that ram effect is negligible to the contribution of the turbochargers. And basically, uh, turbochargers were placed down here in the side pods, so, you know, having an airbox over here is not very, very helpful. One car, though, had uh, mini airboxes, if you will, uh, and that was the Williams FW11B. I'm just going to write it here, FW11B, the Williams FW11B of 1987 had on its pods, I'm just going to draw it here in mini form, there's the pod, the side pod, and it had here uh, small periscopes feeding, feeding the turbochargers placed in the pods. And those periscopes were producing a little bit of ram effect, but I don't think that was like a big game changer. Whereas with atmospheric cars, with the non turbocharged cars, I think, I think that ram effect could provide you with a decent advantage vis-a-vis -vis not having one. Of course, the other advantages play a, a role as well.